Hello and welcome to this video on when should you use item response theory versus confirmatory factor analysis. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with Quantfish and on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials. I usually cover topics related to structural equation modeling, factor analysis, multi-level modeling and latent class analysis. I also sometimes address issues in measurement like in this video. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter, as well as workshops that I offer through Quantfish. In this video, I want to address a frequently asked question about item response theory or IRT versus confirmatory factor analysis or CFA. And so a lot of uh, people are confused about when would I use IRT versus factor analysis? What are the benefits of them and what are the distinctions? Are they interchangeable? Could I use either one? Under which condition could I use either one? Or are there conditions where I can only use IRT or only use CFA? So I want to shed more light on types of questions like this in this video here. So first of all, item response theory, as the name says, is concerned with item level data, which means typically variables, response variables that are either binary or dichotomous and can take on only two values or that are um, ordinal or categorical, polydemous categorical with more than two response categories. Oftentimes in testing, when we use items in tests or questionnaires, the items may be binary, such as uh, correct, incorrect, or right, wrong, or agree, disagree, or they may be ordinal on a Likert scale, let's say from 0 to 5, or from 0 to 4, from uh, disagree to, or completely disagree to completely agree. And so those are types of variables that IRT uses or that are analyzed in IRT. When you have item level data, you can find out about the psychometric properties of these items. For example, you can figure out whether they are unidimensional, measuring a single latent variable, or whether they are multidimensional, measuring multiple latent variables. And you can already see that there's a relationship between IRT and CFA because I was almost using the term single factor or multiple factors because factors or latent variables are also considered in factor analysis and so IRT parallels what factor analysis does in terms of looking at how well underlying continuous latent variables are measured by observed variables and whether there's one single latent variable that is measured by a set of items or whether there are multiple latent variables. And so we can distinguish between unidimensional scales where there, there's a single underlying continuous latent variable or multi-dimensional scales where you have multiple factors or multiple latent variables. So in that sense, IRT does something very similar compared to factor analysis. It allows us to test whether a scale is unidimensional or multidimensional. It also allows us to examine item properties to see which items may be a good fit with a model versus not such a good fit with the model. There are item fit statistics available in IRT. And so these are methods that allow us to look at item level data. Now, IRT would typically not be used when you have continuous variables. So when you have metrical response variables such as test or questionnaire sum scores or other metrical numbers that mm. are continuous in nature, then you would typically not use IRT models, but you would rather use factor analytic models because most IRT models are designed for binary or ordinal data, meaning categorical variables. So that's one big distinction is that factor analysis is typically used when you have continuous variables. Now, what makes things a little bit confusing is that there are also factor models that are appropriate for binary and ordinal data. So you can use factor analysis, both exploratory and confirmatory, also for item level data. And that, that's so say where people get confused, where they think, okay, or they wonder, can I use IRT 
or should I use IRT for my categorical variables or should I use factor analysis? What is the difference? And so one key difference is that IRT is a so-called full information procedure where you use the full information in your data in the response patterns across a set of categorical indicators to estimate IRT model parameters and that's usually done with maximum likelihood estimation. And so that is therefore more computationally intense in a way because you're not just basing your estimation of parameters and fit statistics off of a correlation matrix or covariance matrix like we do in factor analysis, but rather we're using, we're extracting the full information from the um, observed response pattern frequencies to estimate the parameters. And in that sense, IRT is a more thorough procedure, we could say, for analyzing item level data because it's not just based on higher order moments. It's not just based on tetrachoral correlations or polychoral correlations. It's really based on the observed response pattern frequencies and, it, and it, it compares the observed response pattern frequencies to model implied response pattern frequencies, for example, to test model goodness of fit using a Pearson chi-square statistic or using a likelihood ratio test statistic for goodness of fit. And so that's so say more fine-grained, it's a more thorough so say item analysis. In that sense you could say if you really want to know a lot about your item properties then probably IRT is more suitable because it has these this full information property because it provides item fit statistics it also provides person fit statistics where you can see which persons may not be a good fit with the model because they show aberrant response patterns or special response styles or something like that so it's more designed for a more fine-grained analysis of the items that being said though factor analysis can also be useful for item analysis because in a way, it's maybe easier to interpret some of the parameters of factor analysis, perhaps because we're more used to them. So more used to factor loadings because they're like regression coefficients. In particular, we're used to standardized factor loadings, which can be interpreted as correlations in some factor models at least. And so we find it more straightforward to say, oh, this item loads highly on this factor. Then we find it to look at IRT parameters, threshold and um, and item difficulty parameters in um, IRT that are in logistic metric where we have a hard time maybe wrapping our mind around logistic regression function and stuff like that. So, so factor analysis is a little bit easier to interpret for some people because it's based on a linear model, it's based on regression coefficients, correlations, and so um, it's a little bit more straightforward for some people. And it can also provide useful information about item level data. We can use tetrachoric and polychoric correlations and analyze them with factor models using, for example, um, WLSMV uh, or um, diagonally weighted least squares estimation in, for example, M plus or Lavan. So they'll fit a factor model to ordinal data to binary data and plus can do both they can fit an IRT or and plus can fit an IRT model to your data using maximum likelihood and full information or it can use limited information using the tetrachoric or polychoric correlations into in the factor analysis tradition and then you can compare the results so there's really so to say different um, th there's a lot of overlap between IRT and factor analysis and different programs now implement both IRT and factor analysis. So those are the key things from my perspective that IRT is a little bit more fine-grained in terms of um, the item analysis. It also provides person ability score estimation, which is often of interest to estimate IRT scores. Now you can also estimate factor scores, of course, and factor analysis, but that may have certain disadvantages. And so the big difference is in the scale level. And then also another big difference is in whether you use a full information procedure such as IRT that uses all the information from the observed response pattern frequencies to estimate parameters and fit statistics versus only using a polychoric or tetrachoric correlation matrix or a covariance matrix for continuous 
variables. Now, what would I say? So say, what should you use? Again, it depends on your purpose. When you have item level data and you really want to find out um, a lot about your items, you want to do a very thorough item level analysis, then probably you should look into IRT models, which are full information procedures. If you're more interested in, so say, the overall factor structure of a set of questionnaire items and see if that matches with your um, observed factor or, or your theoretically expected factor structure for a given scale, then you may um, be better served with a factor analysis model that is suitable for binary or ordinal data, uh, one that's based on tetrachoric or polychoric correlations, uses an appropriate estimator such as WLSMV in M+. If you're more interested in the specific details of how these models work in M+, I have videos on both IRT model fitting in M+, and also fitting of factor models for ordinal data, and of course factor models for um, continuous or interval level data that you can find here on the Quantfish channel. So check these out as well. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about IRT versus factor analysis. If you did, then please subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a, an IRT course that we offer through Quantfish, as well as a classical test theory and factor analysis course that is also offered. And I'll see you next time.